Hi, and welcome to Category Management Knowledge Group's Category Management Tip. If you don't know about CMKG, we provide category management training solutions that are driven from a foundation of accredited e-learning courses. I'm Sue Nichols, the President and Owner of Category Management Knowledge Group. At CMKG, we like to share our perspective and knowledge in subject areas that relate to category management. Today's session is part two of a two-part series on turning data into insights. If you didn't already watch part one, I suggest that you go find the video with the same title, but part one, so you can see the whole subject. If you'll recall from part one's tip, insights are specific statements that define the business issues or opportunities based on the synthesis of two or more intelligent conclusions that are gleaned from the data. An insight answers the question, so what? The more scientific side includes drill-down analytics, which is what I covered in the last tip. And then there's the knowledge side, which is more based on experience and intuition, which is what I'll cover today. Here's the insight that we derived from the last tip, that Retailer X has an opportunity to improve sales in Category A through increased support in the premium segment. This insight was derived based on the synthesis of several data points that we reviewed. So how can we improve this insight to ensure its relevance for Retailer X? By adding in experience and knowledge. This isn't as easy of a process to explain as talking about the science of category management. Once you have an insight that's been derived from analytics, then you should reflect on it based on intuition, knowledge and experience that you've gained from what you've learned, read, analyzed and heard. I find that the more experience that you have in a particular subject, the easier this reflection may be. In my example, when I reflect about the premium segment within Retailer X, it makes me think about five key focus areas for Retailer X, including private label strategy, target consumer, store clusters, gross margin, and shelf inventory. Each of these areas are important to the retailer and may impact supporting the premium segment within a specific category. So they really need to be addressed before a decision to increase support in the premium segment can actually happen. So from there, I can develop my hypotheses based on the reflection that I've done. For example, Retailer X considers their private label brand to be of premium quality, and so they don't want to support competing brands to the detriment of private label. Retailer X doesn't have the same target consumer as the premium segment, so they don't believe that supporting the premium segment is necessarily a good option. Retailer X also has specific store clusters that would probably be the only ones that would make sense to support a premium focus for the category. In general, the premium segment tends to be highly profitable for Retailer X and will drive margin in the category. And further supporting the premium segment will increase inventory and reduce turns for Retailer X because of the extra dollar cost associated with more premium products. So now, I've added my knowledge and experience by developing these hypotheses. But I'm by no means done. Remember, these hypotheses are based on knowledge, experience, and intuition of yourself or others, but they really need to be supported by data and analytics wherever possible. Once the data and analytics support the hypothesis, then you can come to some more relevant insights and conclusions than the ones we derived from only focusing on one data source and then not applying our knowledge and experience. For example, if I want to confirm that the premium segment is a key competitor to the retail's private label brand in the category, I should look at cross-brand interaction data to get a perspective of what other brands and segments the private label brand consumer purchases. It's even better if the data is broken out into sub-segments within the private label brand and also within the premium segment for even more detailed insights. Then I can prove or disprove each of these hypotheses using these analytics and data and then integrate these findings into an even more compelling insight with much more relevant detail and perspective than my initial insight on the left. So let's review. First we do the drill down analytics and derive insights from the synthesis of two or more data points. Then we reflect on these insights that we've derived and develop hypotheses on these insights based on our knowledge, experience and intuition. But we're not done there because hypotheses don't mean conclusions. We need to follow this by more analytics and investigation to approve or disprove the hypotheses. And then finally, a more detailed insight can be captured that considers many other important factors that weren't in the first insight. 
Of course, this is a simplified process, and it doesn't exactly happen this way all the time, because everyone has their own problem-solving styles, and also, knowledge and experience will make sifting through the data and knowing where to go much easier, so you're already applying some of your knowledge and experience as you're making those choices. But this same knowledge and experience can also sometimes allow us to make assumptions based on our intuition and experience that are incorrect or maybe outdated, especially for those of us who are a little bit older. That's why it's so important to remember to take the time to prove your hypotheses instead of assuming that your hypotheses are correct because of your past experiences. So that's it for today's tip. Combining science and knowledge together definitely creates the best formula for great insights. CMKG has some great courses that can help you to build your category management knowledge base. In fact, all of our courses do, all 29 of them. And they're relevant for different roles and industries, not just for category management professionals. Also, we have a retailer and standard track for all of our courses and programs. So what's coming up for us? My next tip is going to focus on some of the soft skills of becoming an effective analyst, regardless of what your role is. If you've enjoyed today's tip, you can visit and or subscribe to my blog if you haven't already done so. If you're interested in category management training, please visit our website. We have topics that will help to fill in some of the gaps if you didn't understand all of the examples I showed you today. We also have a brand new e-learning center that we're very excited about. You can check it out at www.cmkgelearningcenter.com and there's a free half hour video on the front that explains more about category management training, certification, and gives you some examples of our accredited training. And finally, we're very active in social media including LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter, so please connect with us. If you network with us through one of our social media platforms, we'll be announcing some big contests that will make category management fun. Yes, fun. You can start by liking us in Facebook and let the fun begin. Thanks for, thanks for viewing today's tip. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great day.